if you are just looking at ROIs, pure percentage-wise, how much you're making from your property, yeah. it's better not to go full luxury. In this part of you know Quintana Roo, in right. general, it's going like crazy. Now, how long do you think it'll be before Tulum and, and Cancun are connected? I don't think Tulum will ever look like Cancun. All right, I am with uh, Cheyenne Rashai. Rizai. Rizai, okay. Yeah. And uh, Cheyenne is an expert in the rental market in Mexico, especially in the Tulum area and Playa area with, um, I would say, larger, like more than one bedroom homes, right? Exactly, yes. Okay, so I want to just pick your brain a little bit because we've been looking at a lot of houses and then during the show, um, you know, we're not, not the, co the company's not real familiar with, well, they're not, they're familiar with, um, they're not as familiar as somebody like you with what properties would rent for. Right, right. So I'm really looking to see, you know, if I buy, a, like if I buy a house for, how do we even get to it? Like if you have a three bedroom house that's right. on the beach and it's say a four and a half million dollar home, right? Because right. that's what we, we looked at a couple of those. Three, four bedroom type thing, you know, three, four thousand square feet, you know, private pool, that kind of stuff. Right, right. Are those even worth renting out or are they, you know? Exactly, exactly. So. If this is the way we want to start this, yeah. Um, yeah. So, but for luxury homes, yeah. there is a whole different market. And if we're talking ROI per se, there's going to be a lot of people that's going to not agree with me. But yeah. in my opinion, what yeah. I've seen over the years that we've been doing this, yeah, is if you are just looking at ROIs, pure percentage-wise, how much you're making from your property, yeah, it's better not to go full luxury. Okay. Right. Um, this is just uh, pure perspective on money on money, cash right. on cash. Right. However, there's a lot of benefits that come into going to that kind of market when your waterfront is, you know, you can resell it easier. Yeah. There's other aspects that come to it. Appreciation is higher. Right. Right. And it's always, um, it never goes out of style. Yeah. Even if the city doesn't do well or I don't know, one year, um, uh, Tourism is down. There's another COVID. Right. You will still sell out the waterfront ones, right. no matter what, when, where. Yeah. Right. So there are different aspects to look into it. However, in my opinion, instead of a four and a half million dollar home, it's better to split it into two or three one to one and a half million dollar, okay. and that pushes your ROI higher. Okay. Right. Just cash and cash. So getting a house maybe off the ocean front and getting a couple of them would give you a better rentability maybe then right on the ocean. Exactly, so management comes into it as well, yeah. um, that you need to make sure that you know what you're doing, but yes, in my professional opinion, yeah. when we go just for, hey, we wanna make the most amount of money, yeah. it's better to be on a cheaper side. Now, if you can find that property on the beachfront, yeah. for a million and a half, two million, yes, go for it. But if you're talking a six bedroom, seven bedroom, four and a half million dollar one, yeah. To me, it's better to split it into okay. two or three, four bedroom. Yeah. Yeah, I had a friend of mine, he bought a house about a little over a year ago. Okay. In uh, Akamal Bay, or Akamal, yes. no, Akamal Sur. So it's an Akamal Sur. He paid a million and a half for the house, mm -hmm. tore it down, thought he was crazy. I thought, I think this guy is crazy. He <laughs> tore down a million and a half right. dollar home. And then he's spending another, I think, Two million, I believe, right. putting up a really nice home. Like we're talking five thousand square feet, like really nice, luxury. very, yeah. very luxury uh, home. So he's all in now for three and a half million. And I was just talking to a realtor the other day in that area, actually just yesterday, mm -hmm. and she's saying, "Yes, that property is now probably worth five million dollars." Exactly. I'm so like, holy cow, that <laughs> is another model, five million dollars. So that's a million and a half on what he already. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> good. Good on him. Yes. So houses are appreciating that fast. Is that what's happening? That is. Yeah. So again, uh, you can't go wrong when you're talking waterfront. This is prime real estate. It doesn't matter which country you're talking about. Yeah. As well, right. So uh, even houses inland. Yeah. It doesn't need to be close. Yeah. It just depends on what which pocket you are choosing. Right. Um, in this part of you know Quintana Roo in right. general, it's going like crazy. Just the entire ecosystem, entire economy is improving here. Yeah, it's insane. Um, that I mean, that, I, I'm seeing like houses that were for sale for 1.7 million a year ago. They're you know 2.4. I mean, yeah, and yeah, it's crazy. And so the trend goes as such as well. The moment that you see you know. Um, 
the interest rates for mortgages drop yeah. in US, Canada, right. around the world, you see a, you a, know, big, a, a big boost in prices here and yeah. people are buying. People are paying cash sometimes, yeah. the majority of the times when you're talking about your real estate in Mexico. Mm -hmm. These move and move yeah. quick. Right. So someone's buying them. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so even like, so the, the US economy and the interest rates have been you know, pretty high. Right. Um, and even with the higher interest rates, housing, how, I don't know, the house, it's difficult to get data on the housing market to know how right. many houses are you know, being bought and sold, but the, de the prices are definitely going up here. The prices are definitely going up in the tunes of, you know, uh, eight to 10%, just yeah. on normal prices right. here per year. Yeah. And uh, in my opinion, a part of it is due to the big exodus that we're seeing from, you know, US and Canada, right. forget about Europe, we can, we can talk yeah. about that in a whole different um, episode, I guess. But uh, people are trying to bring their money out and now Mexico looks like a very viable, growing uh, right. country. Yeah. So uh, all of that money that is coming out is, majority of that in my opinion, is being invested in uh, projects here in Mexico. So are you seeing a lot of people that are just getting out of the US and Canada and just retiring down here, or are they still going back and forth? Uh, so in terms of investment, a lot of people now, just because of how flexible the entire economy here is, yeah. uh, they're looking to Mexico. Okay. Well, this doesn't mean that they're fully moving. That's yeah. that's a pr portion of the people that are retiring and moving fully to Mexico. Right. It looks nice. Your waterfront, you got beautiful. Even if you're not, cost of living is less for yeah. the higher quality of life, in right. my opinion. And there's a full other investment aspect of this that those people, yes, they've been looking for a different place right. with more lenient regulations to be able to make more money. Right. So yes, so I'm seeing a lot of. I'm, I'm, I'm from Canada, yeah. so the number of Canadians have increased drastically. You yeah. can see that talking to developers as well. Yeah, have you, do, you, do you have any idea like how many Canadians, because I, I, like, I know that the Argentinian community in, in Playa is supposed to be 50,000. I think there's probably around 50,000 Russian-speaking people here as well. Right. But U.S. and Canadians, I've never heard any numbers of if you have That's a idea. great question, not off the top of my head, but I'm sure there should be something on that that we can find. Yes. We'll look into it. So is Tulum, because you're more of an expert on Tulum and Playa, yeah. but is Tulum um, a kind of similar like melting pot to Playa, or is Playa, you think, more? Probably, Tulum's probably more, right? In my opinion, uh, Tulum is uh, very, very multicultural. Yeah. Uh, you got a lot of European. So 80% of the market, from what I've seen, yeah. Uh, we're throwing numbers here. These are semi-educated. I don't want to say there are stats on this, yeah. but uh, some people really look into this. So yeah. roughly, with some error bars, we're talking 80% of the market is North Americans yeah. and Europeans there. Okay. And this is mixed. You see a lot of French. There's a lot of uh, you know uh, East Europeans, Russians, right. Ukrainians. We get a lot of American and Canadians, obviously. That's the biggest right. portion, in my opinion. Yeah. And there is Argentinian. The rest of the market, that 20%, is a mix of you know South America and other locations. Okay. So uh, this is a, this has been the trend. Yeah. But now I'm seeing you know more families with kids moving there. It's yeah. like even demographic is changing yeah. as the infrastructure is going more and more. They're building more. Yeah. You'll see now families with kids that we didn't see before. Yeah. Well, I'm hearing the, the schools here are much better than the schools at least in the United States. I don't, I don't know about Canada, but oh yes. Um, so one of our close friends here, they, they have two kids and we were discussing this for what you were getting, the quality of education, mm -hmm. and these are some of them European or American systems. Yeah. So you are, it's the same copy at like fractions of the price. Yeah. And you got larger, you know, facilities, more, you know, you got pools in some of them, you got you, the stuff that you can't normally find in a US or Canadian yeah. school. So for less money, you yeah. can send your kids to a private school right. here yeah. for better education. Yeah, so, I know it's a no-brainer on that aspect of it. I, I was just in Puerto Aventuras yesterday, and they have beautiful some place. of the best schools I, I think in the country, right in Puerto Aventuras. And I think Tulum. When somebody was saying Tulum was building some international like green school. green school, green school. Yes, yeah. it's uh, people are actually in wait list oh, really? to go there. Yes, there are a couple of them around the world. Um, this is something that, you know, they teach kids other than just normal, yeah. you know, sciences. They'll teach them how to integrate with, uh, you know, environment as well. Right. Um, so I've, I've heard there's already a wait list. Yeah. People are already like, you know, sign up. 
they're ready. They're ready for it to go. So that's the, does it, and there's, I think one other, there's one school in Bali and... Like, yes, I think there's one in Bali. There is another one. There's a couple, uh, but the Bali one is another very famous one. And that's what I got the name of. And so that's what's coming here. That's what's coming here. There's a lot of like big, big plans that are already approved that are starting to do it. Yeah. yeah. Now, how long do you think it'll be before Tulum and, and Cancun are connected? Because like, Oh, that's a very good question. Um, <clears throat> So I want to sort of make a differentiation yeah. here. I don't think Tulum will ever look like Cancun. Yeah. Just because on purpose, they're trying to create a different vibe here. Yeah. Uh, like, like they call it Bobo Chic, or yeah. whatever that means. Um, so the, the vibe of the city is not going to be concrete buildings and stuff like that. There's a lot of immigration of the surrounding. So that's the Bali vibe. Yeah. But imagine that on a whole different level of luxury. Yeah. So... Connection is a different thing. A lot of people ask me, is it going to look alike? Are we going to go to that? Yeah. No, no, no. In my opinion, the direction that you're seeing, restaurants, buildings, architecture, is a whole different luxury market. All right. So, are they going to build the entire thing? I feel like Tulum is going to be... So, we've got Cancun. Cancun yeah. is now a full-on city. Yeah, yeah. Now, after that, you want to come... There is a lot of little one port, you know, Puerto Morelo, Morelos. Right. And as you come down... Playa is your next one. Right. Playa is also saturated now. Yeah. And now it's Tulumsa. Yeah. Uh, you know, with the airport, with the Maya train that is going, with all these infrastructure stuff that are building, I feel like we got another five to ten good years of appreciation from Tulum. Okay. So you think um, you think Playa is saturated, or do you think um... so? Uh, are we talking investment-wise, or are we talking in terms of if the city is grown? No, I would say both. I mean, if, I mean, because I, I see I see Playa is still growing, right? And um, and and you know, one-bedroom studios are still renting, right? You know, where I'm hearing Tulum has you know ten thousand you know homes right now, right. one one studio and one-bedroom homes that are on the market, not for sale, not that are not selling. Yes. And so from that aspect. One bedroom and studios are not renting for a lot either in Tulum right now, so it's not a great time to get into Tulum for a one bedroom or studio. Correct. But Playa still is a good time to get into one bedroom or studio. Playa. So they're still renting. Correct. Playa is still a, let's call it a, a tourist destination. Yeah. Right? Uh, they have been around for much longer. They have the full infrastructure, right? right? Uh, there, the, There is a lot going on for Playa. Right. Uh, however, the prices also reflect that. Yeah. You know, the, the barrier to entry is much higher. So, so Playa homes are more expensive. If you're if you're putting like one to one comparison, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, you can get some of the pre-sales for Tulum for much cheaper, just because you're getting the pre-boom. Okay. Right. Because there's pre-sales right now in Playa that I know about, and uh, I think a one bedroom is going for about two fifty. Right. And so, what would a in a pre-sale in Tulum? What would that look like? Starts from one hundred to one hundred fifty. You can get some nice one hundred fifty. Would get you a nice one bedroom pre-sale. Yeah. Uh, in a in a nice, uh, if you like the resorty style, yeah. or if you like the more of a, we got a different variety. Right. You're not going to say these huge complexes in uh, Tulum predominantly. Yeah. There are a couple of them, but it's more. That's the boho or chic. Yeah. They're more like you know boutique. Right. And each one is have their own spin on it, which is which makes it very beautiful. Okay. But yes, if you're into the one and two market, two bedroom market, and you are here for making money, and just again, that's that ROI will definitely push you towards uh, Playa, okay? Because that's the kind of clientele. But if you want the real returns, in my opinion, we need to go a little bit bigger. Yeah. And if you want those capital gains on top of it, you yeah. want your home to appreciate, right? Just because Tulum is so young, I will always tell uh, investors looking to Tulum, Tulum has a huge upside to it. Yeah. Other than just, you know, your property you buy for 500, it's going to be a mil and a half because in Cancun, it's the same one is being sold right. for a mil and a half, right? And also, you can make the most money. But those are three, four bedrooms in Okay. We don't want to get, you know, to sort of send people to Tulum for one bedroom. So if somebody's got a three or four bedroom home, right? Um, and they say that you, you can buy it. So you can buy a three or four bedroom home in a nice neighborhood in Tulum for, I would say 500 K and above that gets you, it's a very healthy number. People are going to probably, 
uh, disagree with me, there are cheaper ones too. Yeah. You can always go cheap. Right. But we're talking about rentability here, and we're talking about you know uh, advertisements, uh, how you sell it. Right. You got social media, Airbnb, these different websites. Yeah. So you need to have a certain amount of minimum. Yeah. <laughs> right. So yes, I would say 500k gets you a very very decent um, marketable high ROI place into them. Okay. And so. What could so let's say you buy a half a million dollar mm -hmm. house, you get a nice three bedroom and a nice neighborhood in Tulum, right? What would that rent for? I mean, do you have like a ballpark on what you would rent that for, or what kind of ROI you typically see on the floor? Of floor? course, of course. So mm -hmm. let's let's go, let's talk about one bedroom and bring and build this back up to all the, yeah, all yeah. the above, yeah. So, for and again, there's gonna be a lot of people disagreeing. I'm a very conservative number yeah. uh, guy, sorry. So all of my numbers are very conservative. Okay. Take into account the 2023 yeah. market, which is a much lower than 2022 market. Just because the interest rates were so high, people didn't have that much income, uh, disposable income. So rental people travel. Were, rentals were less or homes? Were rentals less? were less. Okay. Rentals were drastically less. And we saw that around the mm -hmm. portfolio. Yeah. Uh, and, and different countries didn't matter where you were just because people were feeling you know yeah. a little bit harder times they didn't travel as much okay. 2022 was very different COVID was removed everyone had savings yeah, yeah. and we saw a 25 percent boost in our revenue so I'll go conservative numbers and uh, so one or two bedrooms like one bedrooms generally is anywhere ROI like you know six eight percent best there are, you know, you go one bedroom penthouse somewhere, you spend it like a three bedroom. Yes, right. we got we got like one bedroom penthouses, rooftop pool, blah, blah, blah. They're generating 16% ROI for us, okay. right? That's an exception. Okay. We're talking 100K one bedroom in a decent, in a normal development. Now you push it to two bedrooms, you're adding another couple percent, two, three percent. Yeah. So this is not linear. I want to make sure it's not like I add a bedroom, it goes another jumps to a percent. Yeah. No. Eighty percent of the market in Tulum is studio one bedrooms. Right. These are offerings, studio one, two bedrooms. Yeah. Offerings on Airbnbs and different websites. So less than five percent of the market is four bedroom and above. Okay. That's why I push everyone. Right now, the market is you want to be there. There's bigger groups going. Okay. So for a three and a four bedrooms, for a three bedroom, we're looking at anywhere between you know 13, 16 percent ROI, yeah. and then for a four bedroom, this number goes 16 plus 16, 18. Some of these I've seen like there are very rare six or eight bedrooms, or if you want to build one, yeah. that's another option. Right. Uh, and those guys are just raking it, raking it. In. It's really? so much money. Like I've seen stats that they pull in. This, if you build it yourself, a six bedroom, it's gonna cost you like, you know, 700K. Right. And they're bringing in like 250, 300K a year. These are USD numbers, but. Yeah. Is that after the rental property management fees or is that? No, I'm talking about gross numbers because you, you can manage it yourself or you can, you know, yeah, yeah. use uh, a different team such as us. Right. Um, but those are different. You can have a mortgage, you cannot have a mortgage because right. now there are mortgage options as well. And I guess we can talk about that as well. Okay. But, um, but yeah, so that's why I say it goes exponentially higher yeah. with the number of bedrooms. It's not a linear approach. That's interesting. Yes. So, and we are seeing a lot of Tulum attracts higher end clientele. Mm -hmm. So you can have a lot of bachelor party, bachelorette parties, yeah. Different kind of group settings, you know, corporate events, weddings. We, we get a lot of weddings that they come and ask for 20 rooms. Yeah. You know? So for that mm. reason, you can push the price much higher. And if you have, that's why I'm saying four bedroom generates exponentially higher. Because now it's not like, oh, I'm charging like two two bedrooms. No, right. that's a convenience. There's yeah. a 25% off charge on it. Yeah. Because now you got four rooms here. Now imagine if you do that eight bedrooms. That's why these very rare big bedrooms, big properties, yeah. it's just unbelievable. I've never seen numbers, and I've done this in multiple countries, yeah. this high. So you've never seen them this high? I've never seen them this high. And it, some of these numbers are, like, these are real numbers, and I look at it, and I'm like, I know it's real, but I can't believe this. Yeah. People look for, you know, a GIC, a government bond in Canada, gives you right now at this high interest rate, like five percent. Right. When you when they make 
five percent, everyone is happy as an investor back home. Yeah. Now you're talking about eighteen percent ROI. Forget about the capital gain and appreciation on your property right. just because you entered to loan very young. Right. Right? I told you so Numbers are crazy. Yes, he's hey, yes. talking. Bear. bear, wake up. Yes. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'm boring bear. So 18% is pretty good, you know, that's a good return. That's a good, that's a, that's an amazing return. And we see that because we mix this with, a, you know, hospitality and short-term rental. Yeah. Um, well, the other question that I usually get is, okay, now, what, what are we talking if you go, I don't want the, you know, hassle yeah. of managing short-term rental. Right. Now, what are the long-term rentals of this? Well, first of all, these are fully passive because yeah. there are, you know, um, teams, management teams that can help you. Yeah. Which is what we're going. You want passive income that's generating 16 to 18% for you. So there is no work, number one. Yeah. But we will yeah. talk about long term rentals. And that's why I feel like looking at the demographic of people coming into Tulum mm -hmm. is going to make a big difference. Right. We're seeing more families right now. This is exactly the same thing that happened in Playa. At first, it was adults coming here to have a good time, right. to go to the bars, go to the beaches, but then slowly the infrastructure came, and now Playa is a family town. You right. get great schools, great daycares. This is the same trend that we're seeing there as well. Okay. So right now, that's why we say Playa might be better for long-term rental. Right. To them still lacking, because it's still a tourist town yeah. that is developing those infrastructure and those you know, stuff for a full family. Okay. But, and that's why this is a great time, and I can't emphasize on that, to get in. So, you're saying though, if, if they're not, you're not gonna get 16 to 18% passive, you're, because if you have, like if I, if I, somebody buys a house like that, right. they're gonna have to do all the work themselves to get 16 to 18%, right? And so in my calculations, and uh, these ROIs that I'm saying, um, I'm talking about cash on cash coming from yeah. their total revenue, after cleanings and stuff like that, yeah. that this property generated divided by the price of the property. Okay. Right? Uh, usually the, the difference, because um, I'm a very conservative guy, usually these numbers are around 17 to 19, 20%. Yeah. And then uh, the fees and stuff for management would translate to 2% off this number. So we're still going to be in the 16 to 18 range on a... Even with hiring a property management company. Even with hiring a property management company. Oh well. Right? The, the numbers are, that's what I'm saying. It's a no brainer. Yeah. If you're happy with a 5% government bond back in the US or Canada, you are going to be ecstatic, right. even if that number drops to 15%. But a lot of people that have the 5% government bonds, they don't have the money to go buy a $500,000 house or a $700,000 house. So, what, right. op what options are available to somebody that doesn't have that kind of money? Okay, so this, <coughs> this next bit goes to my you know, fellow. US and Canadian citizens, uh, options are unlimited. Mm -hmm. We have the same type of uh, private financing that we have in, uh, in the US yeah. uh, or in Canada available here. It's the exact same model, same percentages, maybe half a percent higher, and it fluctuates with the same as a normal mortgage. So you guys can go, some, gov some uh, companies are offering 85% of the value as a loan, so you just need to put 15%. Right? So even in Tulum, they're financing houses. Even in Tulum, they're financing houses. Majority, however, would like a 30% down payment. Okay. So that's a number that I sort of tell to all investors. 30% um, down, and these are open loans, 30-year amortization. So interest rates drop, someone else offers lower, no penalty. Yeah. Flip it. Get, change your mortgage companies. Right. Let that guy pay the rest of it. And you're saving a few percentage here and there, right? Interesting. So when did when did these loans? Because last time I talked to you, we talked. I thought we talked a little bit about loans, but there wasn't really much on the table then. So is this like a new development, or is this something you've known about for a while? Uh, so for Europe, you know, for like you know, I, I get a lot of clients from Europe as well. Yeah. Uh, I'm still figuring out. That's I think that was more towards that topic for yeah. U.S. and Canadian citizen. Private lending is available. Okay. It's as easy as it's exactly they treat you like you're applying for a normal mortgage. You send them your credit score, your uh, finances, yeah, and some of them with the span of forty eight days they pre approve you. Oh really? Yeah, and then uh, you don't even so now developers are getting smart as well. 
because uh, majority of them now they're saying, okay, you want to do a pre-sale? Mm -hmm. They know mortgage companies want thirty percent. Uh, developers are like, you know what? I only want thirty percent from you. Right. Forget about paying me yeah. slowly throughout the yeah. development. Pay me thirty percent up front. Yeah, I'm saying. I'll that. deliver it to you. Yeah. And then at the end, your mortgage company is going to cover the seven percent. Right. So. It couldn't get better than this. And in the span of this pre-sale, yeah. usually on average prices go up by 30%. The developer on purpose the, like make the prices increase every right. few months right. to make sure you know you were the first investor, you trusted this guy right. to develop this. So you make 30% on your money just because you bought it at 500. Right. Now it's the last villa or the last property got sold at 650. Right. I've seen that myself firsthand. My clients bought a 420 seven months ago, six months ago, and it's going to be delivered in another six months. Yeah. Right now, the same villa, the last three in that complex, is being sold for 570. Oh, wow. It's even more than a 30% jump. Right. Right? And a couple just got sold. And so do you think they're going to... They're going to be able to get financing on that in addition to the finance. So the developers are going to require 30% over the two years or up front? Depends on the deal. So th this is why uh, you know having a good team really helps, yeah. right? Um, <clears throat> majority of de developers, they here, they build with that cash. They have their own cash, but they build with the money. Yeah. Here they don't, uh, you know, loans from the banks and stuff. Right. It doesn't really make sense. Again, the credit hasn't really improved here right so uh, so they sort of majority of them if they're on a 30 70 model yeah. they ask you usually it's 2010 they ask for 20 percent 10 percent six months in okay or 30 percent off front okay right uh i have seen if you're one of the lucky ones and you know you're buying multiple uh we have done some crazy like you know 10 percent 10 percent 10 percent within right. the span of a year yeah so they're okay with that um uh, it's deal by that. That's what I love about it here. It's not a cookie cutter. You can really negotiate right. with the right team. You can negotiate uh, your terms. That's interesting. So, is it? It's not difficult then for people to get financing to buy homes here. Not at all. Not at all. Uh, but, but primarily Canadians and people from the U.S. Canadians and U.S. Those are the most simple thing. Okay. Um, for other. Uh, for other investors uh, from different countries, yeah. um, I know specifically if, you, for example, from England, it's easy, right? But if I don't know how it is, I haven't had a client from China, yeah. but I know that it's not going to be as straightforward as a U.S. or a Canadian. Right, right. Um, this is why it's great for people who are listening to this. Yeah. And, you know, they are in the mortgage game. Uh, this would be a great opportunity if you can sort of open that horizon there's a lot of european countries that they come here yeah and they don't have proper uh, mortgage system right so if we can introduce them to them that's a huge market right there well i've been i've been struggling to figure out because i i i know of one company that offers financing in quintana row but, okay but i've heard horror stories about that particular company um i've gone through <clears throat> so <laughs> before i sort of advertise these yeah. guys i usually go through it myself yeah. and I went through the step. This is a Canadian company. It's a great Canadian company and uh, they have a great understanding. They have a good presence here. Yeah. Um, and it was very, very simple. It was more of a business loan as well. They right. look at the property like an asset generating, uh, income generating property. Right. So they even included the, in the rent from this property, which is, I mean, yeah. included the Airbnb rent because they know if you're buying into loan you're going to Airbnb right. why not Yeah. right so they included that on the rent right and we didn't even need to show that uh, us or our clients were making crazy amount of income to right. be able to approve for it because the property Was already floats paid. itself and <laughs> much more Wow. Right? Yeah. And that's why I push people to bigger property because the ROI is so much higher than it's a no brainer for the banks as well to give you the money. And okay. they know it. Yeah. Right? So they know that a one bedroom is not going to cover the mortgage. Right. But a four bedroom, easy. Buy two. No one cares. That's very interesting. Yeah. Yeah. The, the mortgage piece, I think, is a game changer. That's one thing that I've been searching for. So we're going to have to talk. So Definitely. People, people yes. can contact me and, and I'll get them in touch with you. So you to get to. Uh, Love that. Yes. Yeah. <laughs>
we would love to help as many people as possible to get to this paradigm. And then what about like, um, you do some other developments where um, people can buy in, how does right. that work? So, uh, just to give, let's put some numbers into this, right? right? Let's give an example. Uh, a lot of clients, majority of the clients that, uh, you know, contact us, they say, hey, they have, you know, 100,000, 200,000 yeah. lying around somewhere and they want to invest it in a cash flow, right. a cash generating, income generating asset. Right. Right? And yeah. usually, if they go to any other team here, they're like, don't you worry. You can buy full a one bedroom unit here, right. wherever that is, and uh, it'll, it'll generate you some money. Right. However, that percentage, as we just spoke about, is six to eight percent. Right. So now we are introducing this. We're saying the market needs bigger properties. Right. Why don't we introduce these as uh, you know hotel villas, right. which is one of our, uh, the projects that we're doing. You know the Zama, um, so that it is going to be built for the purpose of those weddings. Uh, group events. Mm -hmm. These are six individual villas, right? Now, if you have that 200k, you can't buy a villa anywhere because we just talked about it. A right. decent one starts from 500k. Right. You can mortgage it. Yeah. Or you're like, for other people that are not okay paying the mortgage. Yeah. We're introducing this model, which is a fractional ownership. Okay. Now it's not, and I want to be very clear, it's not timeshare. Yeah. This is exactly like you buy shares in a company, right? And it's going to give you dividends. Okay. So we get this. We put it as a fractional ownership of yeah. a project that is generating eighteen percent. Now you have an option: two hundred k to do six percent, right? Or two hundred k fractional eighteen percent, right? So now for pure investors out there, they're like, it's a no-brainer. Yeah. Like I don't, I'm gonna choose eighteen percent, and that's why we're going that route. We don't want to get you in a mediocre property that gets you 6%. Right. Put your money in a GIC, you make 5% guarantee. Let's push you on an 18% uh, so, project. So have you built any of these yet? Or are you still, have you started construction on them? Where are you at with the construction? Like so some of these, so we partner up with builders who have experience in building multiple yeah. uh, large projects in uh, to the high end. Yeah. Uh, again, I'm not into low quality because we want to market it. Yeah. We want to make sure it's good quality and we can uh, you know, generate the, the most amount of income from right. it. So a couple of them are actually renders are done, all the engineering projects are done, the lot is bought. So we're, we're starting and we have investors. Uh, some of them are already sold out. Yeah. So, so these are very much up and coming, okay. right? Um, and they are continuously going. Right. So this one I have very high hopes for. The numbers, again, are off the charts. Um, so if someone's interested in that, they can definitely contact you and then they'll get more information about what we're offering yeah. and uh, why we think it's a, it's a no brainer. Okay. Again, the goal is to make it as passive as possible for investors right. so that they get the final product. It's yeah. like as easy as you buy stocks and you're getting dividends. Well, I can imagine if somebody could get 18% on a $200,000 investment, that's a pretty attractive investment. Exactly. Yes. Yes. Um, you could do pretty well, and then that's going to keep going up, I would think, eventually. Maybe not next year or the year after, but eventually that's going to keep getting better and better. That's going to keep getting better and better. Mm -hmm. And if you want to take into, in these calculations, I usually don't take into account um, the appreciation of the lot. Itself. Right. Because now you, it's not just like you bought some <laughs> NFT out there. Yeah. Um, you actually, it's a tangible asset. Like you, you do have an asset yeah. that is appreciating as well. So that on its own, you bought, I don't know, 30% of right. this villa complex that has appreciated by 10% as well. Now, are they going to get any kind of discount if they come stay or is that just not? You know? So yes, yeah, so we usually put, um, we're tiering yeah. it, like exactly like any large hotel. Yeah. Um, the more you invest, you get better perks. Perks. Yeah. Uh, but. No. 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 <laughs> He's trying to trigger on. <laughs> I uh, knocks on the door, so he thought someone was coming in. Okay, good. It's okay, right? So, um, okay, so... So, yeah. 
So, um, what were we talking about? We were talking. About? Well, if you, you get if you put in if you invest, you get to stay. You get a discount when you stay. Yes. Or how does that work? So, as I was saying, um, if you invest, the higher you invest in this yeah. in these projects, we get higher incentive for you, and then you get more days for okay. personal use. Yeah. However, I want to make sure that people understand this. It is not a time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so it's not like I have two months a year to use it. No, this is going to be an. It's a, a it's a dividend. Yeah, it's generating. a dividend generating thing. Right. So uh, we minimize owner use, yeah. and this is all to maximize our returns. Right. So yeah, if you want to come in the absolute low seasons, yeah, we can argue about. It. We can talk yeah, about yeah. that. Yes, but in our um, high seasons and stuff like that, absolute. It's for guests. It's for events. Right. It is not even open to owner use. Okay. Yeah. That, yeah that, and that makes sense. I mean, you're not buying it to use it. You're buying it to make money. So. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Interesting. Purely investment. Okay. So one last question I think I have out there. Um, if somebody does have, say, a four bedroom or bigger house uh -huh. and uh, they're either getting ready to put it on the market or they're questioning, um, you know, are they getting the biggest bang for their buck? Um, you know, I know we've talked a little bit. I think twenty five percent is pretty. Twenty five to thirty five percent is what 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 the market here is. Yeah. What what management companies typically charge? Right? Yes. I think you charge. You said twenty five percent. I'm a twenty five percent. Yes. Okay. So that puts you on at a good competitive right there. What other competitive advantages would somebody have by using you versus another management Great company? Question. Great question. Great question. So uh, I want to go ahead and say the style of management. Uh, for different companies, are very different. Um, majority of our competitors here um, lack a few aspects. One, and the most important one, is they do not have a good solid team to take care of your property if something goes wrong. Right. Again, it's a passive investment. Majority of our clients are not even here. So we are. Mm -hmm. Our, you know, their eyes and ears here. Right. If something breaks, if something goes wrong, we are the ones that are going to respond to it. Right. Majority of the people here, very relaxed and um, nothing gets done. Yeah. The other thing that makes or breaks your Airbnb uh, projects is uh, cleaning team and pricing. Yes. Right. Um, it's very easy. I, I always get this question: Don't we have the auto pricing on Airbnb and stuff yeah. like that? And then we'll do it. Of course, so that and that's what majority of people do. Yeah, um, they just—it's a management company, yeah. but they don't understand the intricate uh, aspect of different algorithms, different timing, different seasonality, different—you uh, know—occupancy right. that your property has that need to fluctuate the prices. Prices are not one hundred fifty. Five hundred dollars a day. It's not. Yeah. You know, it's a long week in the U.S. We got a forty percent boost in right. prices, yeah. right? So you're missing out on a lot of those. And yes, there is an auto feature on Airbnb as well yeah. to do it. We always outperform that with twenty-five to thirty-five percent. Okay. Airbnb wants to make sure your property gets rented. Yeah. Right. So they make sure the property gets rented because it's cheap. Right. Why don't you want to squeeze out the last, you know, penny out of this property? Right. And so we, we touched about uh, pricing. We pri like, you know, uh, pride ourselves yeah. in providing uh, proper pricing strategies yeah. that usually outperform all our competitors right. to make sure that it's an investment. We want to make money. We're yeah. here to make money, to make sure we're you know, generating as much possible. Last one is the cleaning. Yeah. You know, Airbnbs are no longer... Um, just hey it's a home away from home you know yeah it's not just you know what it doesn't matter people understand if it's not clean people are treating this as five-star hotels right especially if you have you know nice villas it has to be treated like a five-star hotel it has to be clean like a five-star hotel your sheets need to be spotless yeah you need to have oversight someone needs to come and check after the cleanings are done while the cleanings are done yeah so these are all the cost saving things that a lot of companies do who cares? We just send a cleaner. It's right. going to be clean. Yeah. There's no checks. Of course not. You yeah. want to make sure that everything is good. So you are you have the right setup to make sure all that's done. We have, we've done it in different countries. Yeah. We have a very scalable model, model that we've worked with. We have a very reliable team. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> we push a lot of our staff from uh, five-star hotels yeah. here. So... Okay. <laughs> 
and I might I should probably yeah. shouldn't have said that. Uh, so they come with uh, great experience, right? Right. So that we want to make sure that if you know the clients and investors have trusted us with their property, yeah. not only we're going to take care of it, but also we're going to generate the highest amount of cash flow. So then, if you you're maximizing price, you're you're maximizing the cleaning. Um, so that's good. How do you ensure that you're maximizing the rentability? So that is, um, I'm, a, I'm an electrical engineer myself. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so there is a lot of, <laughs> I love numbers. Um, there are, so over the past years that I've done this, yeah. uh, we're now going to seven years yeah. that I'm in this business. Um, you learn. Yeah. There's other than there's a lot of tools out there that helps us. Right. Um, there's a lot of uh, we use a lot of you know AI um, pricing right. tools. Those are some out there people can buy themselves. Right. Some of it is our own algorithms, and this is what I do. I come from that background, and we have other than just the normal tools right. that are out there. We have our own input okay. into what we're doing. Yeah. How do we know that? It's more experience, and we compare. We right. always have a lot of returning clients, returning being from different yeah. <laughs> management, and we always get their feedback. Hey, you've already tested these guys for two years, right. and you've tested us. Yeah. Uh, almost all of them, right. if they don't live in it themselves, right. <laughs> uh, we've outperformed them by 15 to 20%. Wow. That goes across all the different countries that we're at. Really? Yes. Okay. It's huge what it comes to the pricing. Like you want to make sure it gets rented, yeah, and it gets rented at the highest price. Right, exactly. There is an intricate balance yeah. here. Yes. So, what countries are you in? You're in obviously you're in Mexico, and what other uh, countries? So we're in Mexico. We're in Canada. Pretty soon we're going to be. Uh, we're looking at to expanding into Dubai. Yeah. Uh, we're in different parts of Canada as well. Um, and I have actively, as we speak, uh, people in uh, Malta and Sicily okay. looking at different opportunities. Before we go in there, we want to make sure that we can guarantee a high return yeah. so that when we take all our, all our clients and our investors there, uh, we have this blueprint that, hey, follow A to Z here yeah. and you're good to go. Okay. There is no question. This has been tested before. So we always go in ourselves first, test the market, make sure it's stable, make sure we can generate these 16 to 18%. Yeah. Because we always want to up it, right? Right. Um, if that place generates 10%, absolutely, we're not going to go there. Mexico still makes more sense, right? Yeah. And we are going to be in different cities in Mexico. Um, we're going to uh, West Coast now. So we're going to be in West Coast, uh, Cabo, you know, San Lucas, like different, different locations here that make sense. Yeah. Now we want to open the full luxury market here as well. Oh, so you're going to Cabo next? I'm going to Cabo next. Any, yes. any plans to go to like Sayulito or anything? Sal yes, yes. Uh, <laughs> um, we are, as we speak again, yeah. um, some people there are looking at analyzing the market and talking to developers there to make sure. I need to understand the market. I have a team that their, their job is to understand the market right. before we come here, sit with you, yeah. and advertise these. Right. right? Uh, so it is in the works. I don't want to say stuff <laughs> and, uh, before it's fully done. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Fantastic. Amazing, man. Thank you very much. Of course. It. it was great talking to you. Yeah.